All right, I am going to assume that you have completed the first six pages of this Financial Computing 2 Mini 3 2024 software installation document for uh, WSL, Ubuntu, and VS Code. So in other words, you should be finished with loading WSL and loading Ubuntu and getting your terminal reconfigured, closing and restarting Windows, and then performing all of these steps to install uh, various components that are necessary. So we should be up to up to here. And we're going to take a look at uh, how to uh, create and compile and execute everybody's first program um, called hello.cpp. By the way, uh, when you have installed uh, Visual Studio uh, VS Code uh, under Ubuntu, it's very likely going to ask you if you want to install certain extensions for whatever reason, uh, I have been able un pardon me. I have been unable to get those things to install correctly. So just ignore those uh, uh, suggestions about installing extensions. You don't need those right now. Doing a full configuration of VS Code to use the internal Make system and so on is uh, picky and time consuming. So I'm going to. Uh, do a, uh, a command line compile uh, as shown here sort of in the middle on, on page 9 of this uh, installation documentation. All right, so let's go through it. Um, I'm going to start my Ubuntu terminal. And there we go, eventually. There we go. Now the ls command will allow me to list the files that I have in my current directory. And since I just created this Ubuntu system, I have nothing in my current directory at this point. Uh, I can create a directory using the mcdir command. And let me make a directory called fc2. This is analogous to the mcdir command in the uh, command prompt uh, under Windows. In fact, uh, Unix predates uh, Windows, so this is something that basically Windows borrowed from Unix, and of course we're using it in Linux nowadays. Now when I do an ls, I'll discover that I do have one file in here, which is this fc2 directory that I just created. CD is how you change directory. I'm going to do a CD into FC2. You'll notice that when I do that, my prompt is updated to reflect where I currently am. Uh, so I'm shown that, uh, that I am in the FC2 subdirectory underneath my home directory. Now, the, the tilde symbol all by itself stands for your home directory. If I say cd space tilde, that is a shortcut for getting to the home directory. If I do an ls now, I see that I'm above the fc2 directory at this point. In fact, the cd command with no argument at all will also take you to your home directory. The pwd command will print the name, the so-called full path name of the directory that you're currently in. Let me scoot my Ubuntu window over a little bit so it's going to go off the side of my screen a little bit. PWD tells me that I am in the slash home slash J Ostland directory on my Ubuntu system. And let me once again change directory into FC2. Okay. So I'm in my FC2 directory. Now here I want to create a uh, 
subdirectory for my first program. I'm going to create a subdirectory called uh, prog1. And ls shows me that it's there. And I can say cd into prog1. This directory at this point is empty. Uh, but I am in the prog1 subdirectory. And now to run VS Code inside of Ubuntu, I use the command code followed by a space followed by the name of the directory that I want to uh, access. Now in, in this particular case, the directory that I want to access is the directory that I'm in. And in Unix slash Linux systems, the special directory name dot stands for whatever your current working directory is. So I'm going to say code space dot to invoke Visual Studio Code to interact with my current directory. And we'll cross our fingers. And up it comes. It does some loading of some stuff. All right. Now, the first thing I'm asked here is, do you trust the authors of the files in this folder? Uh, I'm going to say, yes, I trust myself. <laughs> uh, yes, I trust the authors. Um, I see all of this uh, get started configuration stuff, which, uh, frankly, you can just skip all that business. Okay, so in my Explorer window here, uh, I see that I'm currently working with prog1, and I can click on new file for prog1, and I'm just going to call this thing hello.cpp. Uh, when I didn't have the CPP, I got yelled at that this was not valid, so I'm going to call it hello.cpp. That's the conventional file name extension for C++ source code files. And there we are. So I'm now looking at an editor with this empty hello.cpp file. I notice that the font here is very tiny. Let me try to uh, grow that font a bit. Appearance. Let's see. Zoom in. Okay. I can do zoom in with just control plus a couple times. There we go. Control plus again. And in here, I'm going to type my first program. Now, everybody's first program is typically the same, and it's shown here in the uh, Word file. This is at the bottom here of page nine, is kind of everybody's first C program. Let me type that into my prog.cpp file. All right, so the first line says include, and then angle bracket, IO stream. That line says to pull in information from a so-called header, which is the input-output stream header. That's part of the standard library facilities, and it enables me to uh, get input from the user on their keyboard and also to display information to the user uh, on their screen. All right, so that's line one. Now, for some configuration reason that I'm uh, simply not going to worry about um, at this point, uh, I have the squiggly red underline indicating that that's some kind of problem. Uh, the problem is that at this point, I have not completed the configuration of VS Code so that VS Code itself knows where to locate that header. Uh, but fortunately, my command line compiler will know where to locate that header, so I'm just not going to worry about it. Now I'm going to type what's called my main function definition. I start out by saying int main, open and close parentheses, and then curly braces. So this is a function that I'm defining called main uh, in C++, similar more or less to the to the def uh, 
facility that we would use in Python. I can tell that this thing is a function because it has a parameter list following the name. Every C++ program is required to have exactly one main function. That is, every, uh, uh, every hosted application that's running on an operating system such as Linux, Unix, Windows, Mac, what have you. All right, so here is my main function. This main function is going to return an int value, an integer value, back to the system, uh, specifically back to my interactive shell, uh, when it is done running. Okay, so this is a legal uh, specification for the interface to the main function. Now, whereas in Python we would use indentation uh, to indicate the statements that are contained in main, in C++, as we do in Java and several other languages, C, uh, C Sharp, we type our code between a pair of curly brace characters. Technically, these things are actually just called the open brace and the closed brace. My experience is that most C and C++ programmers call these things the curly braces or just the curlies. So I might have, uh, you know, this opening curly brace. Some people would just call the opening curly. Uh, and the closing curly. Typically then you have indented statements contained between the curly braces. My first statement is going to display the message hello world to the user's terminal. And the way I do that is to say std colon colon c out. And then this double less than symbol is what's called the insert or put to operator. To define a string in C++, I'm required to use double quotes. You can't use single quotes for a string. So I'm going to say hello world. And since I want a new line to be displayed, I'm going to use my backslash n for the new line character. Unlike the print function call in Python, when you insert a string into C out, uh, C out does not assume that you mean there to be a new line at the end. So if you want a new line, you have to specify that you want a uh, new line. C out is what's called the standard output stream. It's a sequence or stream of characters connected to the user's uh, terminal. And C out here is part of or a member of this double colon here is what's called the member of operator in C++. Uh, it's a member of the standard library. And std in front of the colon colon is the so-called namespace name for the standard library. You'll notice that I typed a semicolon at the end uh, in C and C++, well, C++, but also C, Java, other languages. The semicolon is what's called the statement terminator, and any simple statement such as this has to have a semicolon at the end. If you forget the semicolon, you'll get yelled at when you try to compile and execute your code. My specification for main on line 3 here is claiming that main is returning an int value when it's done. So let me put that statement in. I'm going to say return 0 and semicolon. Zero is the standard value that the main function should return to indicate success. Um, zero is interpreted as success, and any value other than zero would be interpreted as some kind of failure. And that's it. Okay, so I have now fully typed in the definition for my main function for this very simple program. I'm going to uh, press Control S to save the file. When I do that, notice that the the circle that was up here next to the file name is, is gone. Each time I make changes to this code, uh, you'll see that I have a circle up here now to indicate that I've made changes. But when I <clears throat> press Control S to save, uh, that's gone. Now, When we have learned more about configuration stuff, which is kind of picky, um, 
ideally, we would like to be able to say run and run without debugging to execute the simple program. Unfortunately, there is all kinds of configuration stuff that we haven't uh, performed yet. So when I do that, when I say run without debugging, I'm going to get nasty error messages. Uh, I'll pick uh, that I want to use the uh, C++, uh, the GNU C++. So I'll select that. Uh, select g++.exe, configuration. It's thinking, it's thinking, it's starting to build. And... Okay, the build finished successfully. But I didn't get any output. in my terminal here. And if I go to the output window, I'm, I'm not seeing anything. I have, uh, okay, so when I click on problems, I can see the problems that were detected. I have an improper so-called include path. So, the uh, system doesn't understand where IO stream is located. Uh, that's something that I'm going to have to patch up. <coughs> but for the moment, uh, we're just going to ignore uh, all of these problems. Whoops. And for the moment, we're just going to use Visual Studio Code as a, an editor, basically. Let me switch back to my uh, terminal. All right. All right, so I'm in my terminal right now. And if I do an ls command, I see that I do have this hello.cpp code file. I can look at a text file with more. And so there is my text file. It looks correct. And at the command line here, I can compile this thing. Let me pull up my document here. I can compile this program by using the command line G++ uh, command. G++ is the GNU C++ compiler. So let me just say G++ pro, uh, hello.cpp. That's the source code file name. And then I want to say as my output executable file, let me just call that hello. And that was it. Uh, if I now do an ls, I see that I do have hello here. And if I execute hello, now if I try to execute hello at this point, uh, I get told that there is no such thing. Because, by default, in our Linux environment, uh, programs that are within the current directory are not automatically searched for. So, remember that I can use the name dot for my current directory. And if I want to execute a program contained within the current directory, I say dot slash and the name of the program. Yay, it worked! <laughs> After all that hassle and headache. Okay. So, thus far, in other words, um, we're basically using VS Code as a, as a text editor and doing the compiling and executing in the ordinary uh, uh, Ubuntu terminal. And we will uh, flesh out the configuration of our VS Code environment uh, to make this more convenient uh, as we go. But on the other hand, since most of the programs that we're going to be working with are just single files, uh, it's not too difficult to remember this uh, uh, G++ command line uh, comp comp compile uh, command. Okay, so that is all we need to do so far. Take care.